It's like speaking another language, what you're doing. And waver this, waver that, paper this, paper that. How do we wade through all this stuff to understand? This should have been brought to the American people in a way that can be understood by all. And this is a human right. <laughs> That was a woman at a town hall for New York Republican Congressman Tom Reed, one of several lawmakers hearing frustration from their constituents. At least four more Republicans are holding town halls today and will be keeping a close eye on those events. In the meantime, I want to bring in Congressman Reed, member of the, Me of the Ways and Means Committee. Congressman, first, I want to thank you for holding that town hall. I know it's not easy. You did vote in support of this bill. So I want to go through some of the things, not just that you heard at your town hall, but that were said over the weekend. For example, we heard from Tom Price who said the new plan would be more affordable for those with pre-existing conditions. How is that true? Well, we, we protect the pre-existing condition reform in the base legislation and what we're opening it up to is if someone has a better idea, if a state has a better idea of how to serve uh, those folks with pre-existing condition, we give them flexibility to make that pitch, make that argument and potentially get that approved. But from my perspective, it's collapsing as we speak. It's the right thing to do to take this step forward to start fixing this problem for the American people. Without a doubt, Obamacare has its problems and we need to take a step forward, but to this point, you're saying if the states have a solution, you're open to it. What if they don't have a solution? To say people aren't going to lose access to health care, I have access to walk in and buy a Ferrari. I don't have the money. People's lives are at stake. So how could you support Tom Price saying, listen, this is going to be great. People are always going to have access. It's going to be more affordable. How can you guarantee the American people it will be more affordable? Because uh, exactly that, if the state does not make that application for a waiver, uh, then those pre-existing condition reforms continue forward as is with the guaranteed issue and community rating. And what we need to then do is move to the health care equation and, and get a conversation going across America about how we can start delivering health care in a more effective, efficient way. And that's the third phase of what we're trying to propose as we go down this phase of fixing America's health care problem caused by the, American, uh, the Affordable Care Act. So just to go back, if the states don't have a solution and you will be covered by that waiver if you have a pre-existing condition, that's only $8 billion. It's going to cost way more than that. No, no, that's if the state gets the waiver, uh, and that's if the state applies, and, and, and then the states can also tap into the innovation uh, money that we put into this bill. Uh, what we're really trying to do is take care of a problem that is being caused by the existing laws where a one-size-fits-all health care program is being forced down the American health care system. To us, it's not working. It's collapsing. I've heard the stories. I've seen the stories. And what we do is we take these reforms that work, pre-existing condition reform, and we build off them. And we create better opportunity to get this under control. Have you read the bill? Yeah, of course I have. That's my job as a legislator, and we, we've been involved with this, um, being on the Ways and Means Committee. And I'll tell you, as the Affordable Care Act continues to collapse and we see the, the problems with it across the country, it, we need to move forward and we need to take on this issue. And I went to Washington to solve problems, and I do that by legislating, reading the bill, and addressing the problems of the American people. Paul Ryan said that no one will be hurt by the plan to cut $800 billion from Medicaid. Warren Buffett said he looks at this plan like it's simply a tax break for the rich that hooks guys like him up. So that $800 billion, it's not going to hurt people? Yeah, this is exactly the difference between our approach to it and folks on the other side of the aisle, uh, where the other side of the aisle just assumes more money is going to solve these problems. Uh, we need to do it better because the hardworking taxpayers can't foot this bill anymore. We have a national debt crisis, and I'll tell you, on the state level here in New York, we're seeing people flee because of the tax burdens that they're having on the placed on their backs because of these burdens. <coughs> Will the Senate have to scratch this and start anew, or can they take what's been handed over and actually build from it? Because if you think about pre-existing conditions, if you think about moderate Republicans in the Senate and Freedom Caucus members, how do you marry all these different goals? Well, my hope is the Senate will act sooner rather than later because we're just seeing premium notices go out here, for example, of 40% premium increases across the board. And to me, that, that is unacceptable. And Congressman? We're moving the ball forward. And the Senate, I, I don't hesitate to guess what the Senate's going to do. Okay, well, I understand the point you're making that Obamacare isn't working. 
but the bill that's been passed, what about it works? It's starting to open up. It takes the mandates off that one size fits all approach and starts relieving uh, that type of approach to healthcare and allow people to be empowered and allow, allow states some flexibility if they can come up with a better way to start undoing what is being caused by the laws that exist today. You don't worry that it empowers health insurers to jack their rates of sick people? No, because those base reforms, when we talk about pre-existing condition, guaranteed issue, community rating, are there. And if the waiver goes through, I'm very confident that the Department of Health and Human Services won't approve a waiver unless it can show that health care is being delivered in a better way, not going backwards into the uh, ways of the past. All right, Congressman, thanks for your time this morning. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.